Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of speaking your word. God. How amazing it is to share what you want us to teach one another, God. I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that you can use me powerfully. I pray you can use Mark even more powerfully Come to on. speak to everyone over here and teach them your word, God. I pray this in your mighty son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon, family. I want to welcome you to God's kingdom. I want to welcome you to God's church. If you're here for the first time, please nudge the person right next to you as we have the sermon notes typed out. But today, we have something a bit different. We have the sermon notes available in Mandarin as well. Well, that's simple, because we can. Because we are the kingdom of God. We soon we're going to have it in Swahili, in German, in Italian, I don't know. We're going to have it in every language. So, the title of my lesson today is... How's it going, mate? Whoa. Whoa. I'll repeat that. The title of my lesson is How's it going, mate? So take a second and look around your look around in the room. Who's your best mate? Take a look at that. You know, some of your best friends are now looking back at you. Whoa. I see Terry looking for Jesse Cross, but he can't see him. Whoa. And some of you are still looking at me. Whoa. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anyway, um, if you're here for the first time and you're wondering who's your best friend or who's your best mate or who should be your best mate, mm. let me share a scripture with you. Come on, right? uh, Proverbs sure. chapter 27, verse 17, proclaims, As iron sharpens iron, so one mate sharpens another. <laughs> Who you spend time with has an impact on your well-being. If you do not spend time with people that sharpen you, then you do the opposite. A dull blade is not effective, but can only do more damage. Can you imagine trying to cut a chicken, piece of chicken breast with a dull blade? It takes, it takes like forever. But if you use a sharp knife, it's effective. See, friends determine our success in life. Friends that make you comfortable are not friends that sharpen you. Point one, do you have the right mates? Come on. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 4 to 9. Now Misha, king of Moab, raised sheep. And he had to pay the king of Israel a tribute of a hundred thousand lambs and a wool of a hundred thousand rams. After Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So at that time, King Joram set out from Samaria and mobilized all Israel. He also sent this message to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? I will go with you, he replied. I am as you are, my people as you are, my horses as your horses. By what route shall we attack, he asked. To the desert of Edom, he answered. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. And after a roundabout march of seven days, the army had no more water for themselves or for the animals with them. The people you spend time with reveals your purpose in life. See, King Joram was a very driven man. He had a winning mentality. In the face of adversity and rebellion, he made a favorable alliance with the king of Judah and Edom. This man had an earnest desire to succeed. See, who you spend time with determines the outcome of your life. Who you make friends with determines the quality of your life. Are you spending time with people that want you to succeed in life? See, you are the average of five, the five, five people you spend the most amount of time with. And it's quite common for us to underestimate that, right? Say, no matter, you know, it's quite common for us to underestimate the company that we spend time with because we think it's not that important because friends should make us comfortable. That's what most of us think. But, no matter how big you are or how great we are, if we follow the wrong people, we will suffer the consequences. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come on. Come on. King Joram was a man of influence. It was no surprise that he was, a, he was a king that people followed because he was very passionate about what he did. But despite his success in life, Joram disregarded God. Unfortunately, he led his whole nation into idolatry. In fact, he encouraged them to worship the god of his family, who was called Baal. All it takes is one person to lead people astray. If one man can lead a nation astray, 
How much more influence can a group of people have on an individual? No matter how good you are as a person, how good we are as a person, if we spend time with people that have bad habits such as drinking, smoking, or even sleeping around, we will eventually find ourselves doing the very same thing. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 26. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Now there's a great story about a parrot and a crow. A parrot and a crow, a group of crows. So, there was once a farmer, right? And he lived in a village, let's say India, because I'm from India, right? Um, let's say he's from India, right? So he has this beautiful parrot, and for some reason, this, this flock of crows, a murder of crows, that's what you call a flock of crows, a murder of crows keeps flying to his field and keeps destroying everything he's got, and he gets annoyed. So he decides to load up his shotgun, okay. and he's waiting in the corner, right, for these crows to come in. But he's a pet parrot, is, a very, is very sociable by nature. It loves hanging out, it loves greeting people, it loves talking to people. So one day, when the farmer is loaded up and he's waiting to shoot these crows so he can finally get rid of them, suddenly the parrot decides to fly in and join the murder of crows. It sits among them, but the farmer doesn't see it. And so the farmer, with his joy, creeps under a shed and waits patiently. When the time is right, he gets up, loads his gun, shoots. Unfortunately, he hits his dear parrot. And his kids wonder, like, his kids are upset, right? So they're like, Daddy, what happened to our parrot? Is he going to be okay? And unfortunately, the parrot's feathers are ruffled, and it's just, it's just, it's half dead. And then the parrot responds, ah, bad company, ah, bad company. That's what having bad company can do in our lives to us. So, let's choose our friends wisely. It's important to see whether our friends are people that want us to succeed in life, but more importantly, people that want to succeed in life themselves. See, if God is telling us that there are right friends in our life for us, then that means Satan has a wrong friends for us in our life. Birds of a feather flock together. This is a very famous expression. See, King Jehoshaphat and King of Edom responded positively with a desire to join the war. This is because all the three kings desired to whip, have victory over the King Misha. So having an alliance made it easier. It's, it's very funny, right? So in India, right, the word alliance is actually used to replace the term marriage. So when you get married, it's not a wedding, it's an alliance between families, wow. right? So uh, these guys have a similar mindset here. <laughs> So the phrase, birds of a feather flock together, was coined in 1545 by William Turner. It means that people with similar interests, goals and mindsets, will always be found together. Like-minded people attract one another. Successful people attract one another. Spiritual people attract spiritual people. And unspiritual people gravitate towards unspiritual people. Anyone can be friends with people like themselves. There's nothing unique about that. That's true. The first thing most people do when they arrive in countries like Australia is search for their own kind. Mm -hmm. You'll see the Chinese with the Chinese, the Australians yeah. with the Australians, yeah. the Indians with the Indians. It's just, it's just comfortable. But is that friendship? Is that what we call friendship? Because people want to feel comfortable, they forget about friendship. When you spend time with one another because of comfort, it's not called friendship, it's called familiarity. You can't call them friends. Anyone can be friends with people like themselves. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and perfect will. See, we've got to overcome patterns of the world. There's nothing biblical about, you know, an all-Chinese church or an all-Australian church. Can you be friends with someone that do not have similar interests to in you? Can you be friends with people that talk different, that walk different, that look different, people that disagree with you, people that probably don't even speak the same language? Now that's friendship. There's something special about that. It shows that our friends are not built on feeble things like familiarity, but a rock called Jesus. Wow. See, there's nothing unique about a Chinese person befriending a Chinese person. Why? Because they're from the same culture. Now imagine a Chinese and an Australian being friends. Now that's radical. 
One of them barely speaks English and the other barely speaks Mandarin. Now imagine Jordan saying Ni hao ma. Now, just let it go long. It, it works. We are not of the world. So birds of a feather flock together. That's a worldly concept. That's not a godly concept. We are not the world. We're not bound by culture. This is the kingdom of God. Are your closest friends people from your own culture? From your own race? Or are they different? See, Jesus wanted the world to be evangelized. We are the international Christian church, not the national Christian church. Whoa. Why can I not spend time with people like me? People ask that question quite often. Well, there's something called cultural sin. Each culture has its own unique sin. Right? You know, the Indians sit in the corner, they're like... Bruh. And the Aussies are just Aussies. So there were, the, there were four friends, right? There were four friends, and they lived in the evergreen forest. Now, they liked to meet under a specific tree. It was called the Great Banyan Tree. And it was sort of like the McDonald's for us here in Australia, you know, where people gather together. It's like a sociable spot. So they always used to meet over there. And it was a mouse, a turtle, a crow, and a deer. Right. Now, none of these guys were similar. They were all very different, but they were great friends. They used to meet every time at 5 p.m. at set sharing time, just so they could uh, evangelize, right? So, <laughs> so these guys, they're waiting. It's, uh, they meet on the first day, meet on the second day, meet on the third day. And on the fourth day, for some reason, the deer doesn't show up. So the friends get really worried. They're like, where is our dear friend, the deer? <laughs> I made that on the spot. <laughs> But, so they're worried, right? So the crow's like, alright, let me fly out, let me suss the situation, right? Let me fly around. So he flies up, and all of a sudden he sees the deer stuck in a hunter's trap. So he gets worried, so he goes down quickly to his friends, and he flies up to them and says, Hey, the deer is stuck, we've got to help them. And so the mouse says, yes, we do have to help them. And the turtle says, yes, we do have to help them. So, so they decide that the mouse should jump onto the crow, and the crow flies to the deer. Right? And the turtle's like, I'll be there, wait for me. Oh. But we don't know when he's going to get there. But he gets there somehow, anyway. So, all three of them, all three of them are there, and they notice that the, the, the hunter is getting closer and closer. Right? And the crow can see it from up, up above. So he drops the, rat, the mouse off, and the mouse goes and chews the net free. And suddenly the deer is free, and the deer runs away. And the turtle is, you know, hiding behind a bush somewhere, right? Because uh, he couldn't make it there on time. But anyway, they're freed, and all of a sudden, you know, like, I'm sorry, all of a sudden, no. Towards the end of it, all three of them run back to the banyan tree, and they're like, thank you so much for being my friends. Now imagine the same story. Imagine the deer asked a deer for a help. How would that work, right? He runs with his antler straight into the net, and he's trying to get it off, and he gets stuck too. And then he calls another deer, and then he tries to ram it with his antlers, and he gets stuck. See, people like ourselves can't help us. We need people that are different from us to help us. So, um, each of us are blind to our own sin. We need people that are different from us that can call us out of our sin. A deer cannot help a deer. It needs something different. The, fur, the, the phrase, birds of a feather flock together, is actually incomplete. It actually goes like this. Birds of a feather flock together until the cat comes. Huh. Until the cat comes. So, you notice that you know, you've been friends with lots of people your entire life. Friends in high school, friends in university. Are they still with you right now? As you grow up, your priorities change in life. They're not the same. You're not as close as you used to be. See, all progress takes place outside your comfort zone. Which is why we need to make friends that are not like us. If, you, if the friends you have always make you feel good, are they truly your friends or are they your enemies? The friends you want are not the friends that you need. Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 27 verse 6, Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Now it's a very privilege to be up here and preach to you guys. Uh, some of you here know me. Before I was a Christian, you know, my friends in the world would always say, Paul, you're awesome. Paul, you're one of a kind. You say the craziest of things. There's no one else like you in this world. Now, that always made me feel good about myself, so my head just kept growing bigger and bigger. Right? I lived my whole life thinking I was exactly what my friends told me I was. Right? But let me translate what they actually tried, were trying to say. 
They were trying to say that, Paul, you are selfish. You are arrogant, conceited, and rash. You care about nobody but yourself. When I started living like a Christian, I started understanding this truth about myself for the first time. I realized that I cared about nobody but myself, and I hurt the people in my life. You know, I tried to be a leader in the church, and I failed miserably. Some of you were there to see that. Um, but the reason I'm still here is because there were people that loved me, people that called me to change. They also did something different. They told me the truth. They didn't walk around eggshells when it came to me. They told me, hey, you need to change. Hey, you're selfish. Hey, you need Jesus. And uh, that's what happened. Um, <laughs> so there were times in my life as a disciple where I really struggled to continue wanting to become a disciple because I believed that I wasn't good enough or I, I just needed help. I just really needed help. I needed people to believe in me. And um, I remember some really good friends of mine, Joe and Beth. They helped me in that time. Uh, I, chose, I decided that I didn't want to be a leader. And remember this one day where Beth pulled me aside and she said, Hey, why don't you believe in yourself? Because I believe in you. So, that made all the difference to me. That gave me the courage to change. Remember Joe always telling me he always believes in me. See, friends help us change. Godly friends help us change. We all need people like that in our lives. Now, um, I really do appreciate Beth. She always confronts me. <laughs> and every time she confronts me, I know she's right, but I just don't want to admit it. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, she's right, but I just don't want to give her the credit for it. But today, I've got to be honest and say, you know, she's usually right. When it comes to my side. <laughs> and uh, she's been telling me the truth, and she's been telling me to change since 2020. Come on. She probably doesn't realize it, but she's sort of like my best friend. Because she cares about my sin and she wants me to change. Amen. See, when you are up in life, your friends get to know who you are. When you are down in life, you get to know who your friends are. There will be many people who will be in our life when times are great. Instead, take note of people who remain in your life when times are hard. Find people in your life that challenge you and inspire you. Spend lots of time with them, and it will change your life. Now I'm going to hand it over to Mark to preach to you. Jehoshaphat asked, Is there no prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire of the Lord? And an officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of uh, Shaphat, is here. He used, uh, he used to pour water on the hands of Elisha. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat Sorry, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Adam went down to him. Elisha said the king of Israel of sorry. Uh, Elisha said the king of Israel uh, 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 Elisha said the king of Israel, uh, why do you want to involve me? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. No, the king of Israel answered. Because Adam was the Lord who called us three kings together to deliver us into the hand of Moab. Mm. Elisha said, As surely as the Lord Almighty lived, whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of the Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. But now bring me a harvest. So here, it talk about the kings. They are looking for help. Mm -hmm. The Jehoshaphat is considered as a good and a spiritual king, the godly king. 
And uh, Jehoshaphat worshipped the Lord and the land of the people in seeking the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he kept trying to build an alliance with Israel. Mm -hmm. And the king of Israel and uh, Edom was wicked, a bad king. And here they are going to cross the desert. You know in Old Testament, the, uh, going, going, uh, going through the desert represents the time of testing spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. So it also happened in your Christian life, right? Come on. Yeah. So that, you know we have a lot of uh, difficulties sometimes, and I met a lot of difficulties in my Christian life. Come on. At the beginning, I don't really trust God, mm -hmm. so I always want to ask some, uh, you know, help, but only for my own benefit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, only I get a job and I can serve God, mm -hmm. or let me get a so I don't want to call leader with other sisters. I just want to be with, with my girlfriend. Maybe I will get married first, right? So I wasn't really trust God. So a lot of challenge in your life. So the desert of uh, you know fruitlessness. So we can't get fruit. You get frustrated. You know you go sharing and no fruit. And uh, the desert of finance, uh, finance, uh, finances. Like you can't find a job. Or your job is not that it help you spiritually, and you can't go to sharing or evangelize, but you just feel struggle. It's also one situation. <laughs> and or like me and Paul, you know, or dating life definitely a death. Of <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of challenges. If you come with <laughs> so when the same way the baddest thing happened, you can see the two different reactions, two different super different reactions. The, from the king of Israel and the Jehoshaphat. You know, as I mentioned before, Jehoshaphat is a godly king, and, but the king of Israel is a wicked. Mm -hmm. So the king of Israel doubted God. He said, Has the Lord called us three kings together only to deliver us into the hands of Moab? But the Jehoshaphat said, Is there is no prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire the Lord? Mm -hmm. So you see, Jehoshaphat trusts God. And mm -hmm. want to seek help from God. Mm -hmm. So, we, which response, like, do you have in time of the testing? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of testing in your life, right? Mm -hmm. So, what response do the friends around you have? Mm -hmm. That's also a good question. Mm -hmm. So, is the time to change your friends? Mm -hmm. You gotta think about it. Mm -hmm. Come, on. Come on. Do you trust God more than your friends, mm -hmm. or the other way around? So I gotta give you some example, you know, myself. Before I'm, uh, you know, haven't got baptized. I have some non-Christian friends. So they are all like Chinese. Like Paul said, you gotta look for some Chinese friends. <laughs> yeah. So all Chinese. So they have a dream. It's not a Chinese dream, like communist dream. They want to become a communist. Why? Because that's stable. They go back. They can get found a job easily. Because if you're not a communist, you can't work for government. Mm -hmm. You don't work for government, that's what we intend to live there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of my friends, after I got baptized, he was, he was my like a best friend, kind of. So, the, the, on the street, I met him. I, I, I'm about to see, how's it going, mate? You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> he ignored me. Oh. He probably know I've become Christian. He so, thought, okay, that guy become Christian. Probably I go back to China, that would impact my career. Yeah. You know, oh. kind of a little bit. So I got super hurt. That moment I realized I shouldn't trust people. You know about God. Because people are not perfect. They, they because of benefit maybe one help with you. A social benefit or other benefit. But only God you can trust always. And also, you know, in my workplace, they're all nice guys, but sometimes they talk about something bad about the other people. Yeah. Because, you know, when you go to have a coffee, you want to kill your time, you talk about good things, sure you will. But when you finish that, and you're going to talk about some bad things about other people, and say, oh, I heard about this, about that guy. And, oh, who you hear from, from that guy? And who you hear from, from that guy? Like, it's super bad. You can see, it's hard to, for you to trust other people. Because when you just open your heart, to your co-worker, and who knows, he's going to tell that thing to other guys. Yeah. So, in the world, it's hard to trust other people. We yeah. only can trust God. Yeah. So, even in the kingdom, mm -hmm. the disciples, you know, for some disciples, at the beginning, I trust a 
lot, you know, disciple, especially leader. You now, when you super trust the leader, I mean, you just trust the leader first. So you rely on the leader so much, and you trust the person so much, you're gonna, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna be critical. You think, oh, I trust you, you are a leader. You are in a position, you're supposed to do a good job. You <laughs> fell. <laughs> Useless. Why you stupid man leader? Also, I was living with James. He reminded me, at the beginning, I moved to that household, I said, oh, beautiful, beautiful, you know, Christian household. Anything gonna be beautiful. But when I go in, I don't do that much. I said, oh, who's the household leader? Oh, hey, James. And I said, this household dead. Whoa. And everyone is happy. And if I go in, I just be critical. Because I don't trust God can fix all the problems. I trust the leader can fix all problems. I don't realize the king of the kingdom, the God's kingdom, is Jesus. I saw these people, you know, those are leaders. So I become critical. I grow my business in my heart. Of course, you don't grow. Because you thought leadership until you want to become a leader. You don't want to help people. So that's actually tracked me a lot in a, you know, the early time become a Christian. Yeah. So I really want to share this. Once you trust God, your life gonna be full of joy. Once you found some spiritual friends, not the friends you just like or do something together, you know, always traveling or eat good food together. Like before, I hate how to with some spiritual friends. Room number one, as a Chinese disciple in the kingdom, room number one, stay away from Joe and Chi. <laughs> Why? They are spiritual. Like one story I have from, uh, yeah, this story can tell you how radical the Chi is. The Chi is, uh, you know, leading a Chinese church. And uh, one day a disciple said, okay, we have Bible talk, right? We should cancel it. We should just have fun, cancel it. And Chi said, cancel Bible talk? Cancel you! <laughs> People start involved, you know, ask themselves. Because they ask all the Chinese people, other Chinese people are gonna ask themselves, oh, is, is I'm gonna go back to China. When everything that they see Joe's face, that's the power of being a spiritual man, you know. You, know, you just do something spiritual and God will do the rest of the job. So that's I learned how important be spiritual and how important how to with the spiritual people. Because that's really helping you. Same thing, like you be a listener, you listen. You never can learn that much compared with the preacher. I'm not saying I learn a lot. I see like Joe, every single time he preach, he do all the job. He learn all the scripture. So that's that's him inspire me. And the Chinese people, my English is not like great, right? so but I still need to learn, right? I still need how with the spiritual people. And really, really be a leader for the God and just work for the kingdom. That's why I realized we got go out with the spiritual people and help spiritual life and uh, I follow joy and uh, the thing is before I don't realize that and uh, Bonnie showed me a photo like, I thought I was joy you know I was full of joy and a uh, happy boy <laughs> to the church but when I see the photo like two years ago I feel that's not me right I feel sad mm -hmm. I just not fully I feel joy I, I, I just fake God, I come to church I say, okay I don't want joy I'm supposed to be joyful it's not from my heart, but from God. But I come here to worship God. It's not I come here to just enjoy the fellowship. So when I check the photo, like I don't know when the Obey uh, Bonnie take that photo, like, and I see this different. I see the face is different. It's a photo of joy from God, not from a person. So you gotta trust God, not a person. And your life gonna full of joy. So next point. The joy of having spiritual friends. Go to 2 Second Kings, chapter 3, 15 to 20. It's right. While the happiest was plain, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha. 
And he said, This is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water. For this, for this is what the Lord says, says. You will see neither wind, wind nor rain. Yet this valley will fill with water. And you and your cattle and your other animals will drink. This is a, it's an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. He will also deliver Moab into your hand. You will overthrow every fortified city and every major town. You will cut down every good tree, stop all the springs, and ruin every good field with stones. The next morning, about the time for offering the sacrifice, there it was. Water falling from the directions of uh, uh, Edom, and the land was filled with water. Come on. Wow, that's amazing, right? It's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Just right there. So who would not want to have a call from Elisha, right? Mm -hmm. He can just uh, pray to God and help you, like rescue you. So we can see the miracle from God here. So when you trust God and His principles of surrounding yourself with the spiritual people, the miracle will happen in your life. So the example, we are have a lot, a lot of spiritual people here in the God's kingdom. And uh, God will have a plan for every people. But my plan at the beginning is doing. <laughs> I was looking for uh, something you know, can make me feel stable, feel secure. And I think, uh, you know, I was, uh, uh, I was living in China. So I think about uh, what I need in my life. I don't need money at the moment when I'm in high school at uni, because I can just ask. In uni, I can get a scholarship, so it's no problem. So I think, oh, it's time to get a woman, right? You know, money and a woman, that's my dream. So I just get a woman. So how I can get a woman? You know, you do something cool. But that's why I get busted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, well, you gotta be cool, you look cool. And I start to learn rough, you know, the rap. Okay. Oh. It, 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 it's not about, you know, I love music, no. That's your, no but you know, women like it. This is a music. Some of them, some of them. Yeah. So, that's, that's, that's just me. That's just me. I'm not terrible, right? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, later, uh, later, I joined some group. I know it's a cult. There's a lot of cult in China. Because that cult have a good thing is, you can go there and learn the management skills. Like, they can really manage people well. Like, you and me a bad way, right? So I said, I just go to learn the management skill, but I don't really, you know, to do the bad thing. So I joined twice. Not a, like a intentionally, it's an accidentally, <laughs> not intentionally, but accidentally. The first one in the near my uni, it's a lot of cult. Like group, it let you come in, and this small group, I just really fired up, and they play a video of the man from a village, and he threw the dancing and changed his life. Something like that, so everyone fired up. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good lesson, but later on, <laughs> Yeah, later on, they just try to teach you how to earn money for them. It's the okay, you should earn money for yourself, but later on, they let you earn money for them. So that's the first call I joined. I said, okay. When the, when the second time they asked me to go, I said, okay, nah, I won't go anymore. But another one is uh, actually my old sister. He's a business woman, so he, he wants no more business, you know, the partner stuff. So he joined a lesson, a business lesson. That costs a lot, that lesson. I remember one person is $100, like just Australia dollar. But in China, it's like a 5,000 RMB. So it's a lot. And my old sister paid for me, and we just went there. It's just similar, like church. I think that's an African guy. Not African, sorry, American guy. Yeah. It's still the, like a, a lot of things from the real church. So he just go to singing and dancing. And I think one song thing is really danceable. You hear that coming on there? It's a, it's a Chinese sound like Ika Hetzal, 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 Hetzal. It's like a seaway, 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 seaway. Go with flow, go with flow. It's actually dancing. It's <laughs> actually dancing. It's really enjoyable. But they, they can teach you some concept. You gotta go there and they teach you love yourself first. That totally selfish. Because when he teach you love yourself first, you think it's right. And you can love yourself first, right? And you can pay another lesson. 
that's basically their purpose. And uh, that's what I, why I want to join that. And I come to Australia, I say, wow, there's a, Australia still have a court. <laughs> it's, it's super special for me as a Chinese guy. So, you know, and, uh, I think, okay, I almost graduated. I think uh, basketball and, uh, you know, you know how to rap con the trap of men. That's, you know, adult life, you gotta use money. So I, I gotta learn something. Uh, can I earn money? So I said, let's just go to join that call. Yeah, yeah, this one. But it's not. Uh, it's not uh, I hope the reason you're here today is not that. <laughs> I just want to see what it's like. But I don't know what the Christianity for Chinese people. Uh, so I just joined. I just got shocked by the God, by the love from the church, by the spiritual people around me. I feel like I'm so selfish. I come here, I just uh, for my own benefit. But people love me without any you know, return. They don't ask me to return back. But the, my love is super conditional. Like I love you, you gotta love me. You are my good friend. I call you. You don't pick up. You call me. I won't go. Actually, true love, if you really trust God, what the true love from God is unconditional love. Yeah. That's God's love. Yeah. That's supposed to be involved in any relationship. With friends, with your marriage, anything. So I believe if you trust God, be a good disciple of Jesus, you're going to have a good career. You're going to have a good marriage. You can check out our shepherd here. They're all from, like the, the wife and husband, they're from different backgrounds. Mm. It's super hard to follow the word, you know, from different backgrounds. They can have good marriage. It's impossible. So, but in God's kingdom, you can because you trust God. Mm. So that's why at the beginning, during invite me. So I'm willing to come to here. A little bit for learning English, <laughs> selfish, and all the same. But God still let me in. Oh, that's how oh, God is so really merciful. You know? yeah. And later on, still, you know, you come to church, you get baptized. Probably you're not a real disciple. Why? Mm. You don't really, really know God. Mm. Like you really don't have a heart to serve God, trust oh. God. So at the beginning, as I mentioned before, I thought a lot of things. I don't like the leader gave me advice. <laughs> Eventually, P, P helped me a lot. He loved oh, me so me. much. Oh. But the when he, when I got a job in logistics company. I applied for that job so long, for such a long time. But he asked me to quit that job because I'm a mechanical engineer. So he wanted me to get a job in like a proper mechanical engineer job. Mm. But I don't trust him. Mm. I feel like, why I just get a job, you let me quit. Are you my brother or what? It's not a good advice for me. But that job made me really struggle because it doesn't help me spiritually. Mm. It pays really low and I can't go to share on time. I can't evangelize. I can't allow people around me. Mm. I just really throw myself into that job. I wasn't happy. So he really helped me to, you know, give me that advice. That's need courage, you know. And it helped me that spiritual people can do in your life. It helped me and uh, I got a job. That This job is the worldwide top two live, wow. uh, live company. Wow. It's a super good job. Everything is nice. And I remember in a logistics company, uh, I, thought, I, I made a mistake and they just shot, like in the shorting, and they swear to me. Like in front of a lot of people. But now this job, I you know now do the drawing stuff. But the manager is so nice, they always say, Why wow, look to your drawing? Marvelous. That's <laughs> 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 different. That will you trust God, your life will change. Because you, know? you have the courage to do things. Right. And even also Gabby, or lovely brother, a sister Gabby, sorry. Is a he have a job, you know, work for you know the uh, shoe store. Yeah. It's quite intense. It doesn't help her like spiritually, but uh, a lot of people give advice you should quit your job. Like in other situations in the world, people won't give advice quit your job. Mm -hmm. But here we trust God. Mm -hmm. The thing is, Gabby already quit the job, so pray for her. I believe God will help her find an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kingdom. <laughs> and you know, you find a lot of people outside the world. It's hard to build a relationship with them. Why? Because they are not really sacrifice himself <coughs> to love you. Yeah. And you don't, like we barely learn how to sacrifice ourselves and love them as well. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to build a relationship. So at the beginning, I become a you know, Bible call leader. So I did a Bible talk. 
with my co-worker, she talked. So I said, okay, finally, I become a leader. I gotta do all the job. So I go to cook, do all the same. But she thought, come to me, see, Mark, I give you the advice. So please let sister do things as well. Because that we also can do. And that we can help you. And we all can work together, make the small family become better and better. So you see, is, she is not my girlfriend. <laughs> like, you know, is always caring and consider the whole group. So the thing, before I have a girlfriend, you know, a lot of bad things happen because we don't know how to really love each other. I thought I love her a lot. Even now, my, you know, the, the passport and my phone is still from her. You know, the, 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 the girlfriend always wants, you know, I can check your phone. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> so still, it's her. She put that uh, password, and I, I, I feel I love her so much, but I don't know what is real love is. Because I don't trust. I don't know God before, and I we hard to trust each other. So, but uh, compared with the relationship in the kingdom, you can see we have with the spiritual people. Amen. The relationship changed. Mm -hmm. So and. Uh, Another example is Shaul. Shaul is an amazing leader. You I think uh, one godly woman and godly man, the difference is, is compared with an uh, immature man and a woman. The difference is when you find a problem, you are not just go to see the problem, just uh, tell the problem. This is a problem. Okay, fix it. That's not right. But if you are a godly man, godly woman, you trust God, you go there, you bring a solution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me and Shaul, we are living in the Chance night. Oh, wow. So there have a lot of uh, things need to figure out. So I make a plan. Of course, have some mistake stuff. And he come to me and he bring a solution to me. He not come to like uh, tell me to do things. He come here to say, okay, this part is this. We should do this. But what do you think? And he just mark all the things, like one by one. And I so I feel so grateful. For having a spiritual friend mm -hmm. in the kingdom, Come on. because you can't find in the world, right? so that's God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So today, I really want to encourage everyone: if you are, you don't know who is Jesus, please study the Bible to yeah. know who is Jesus Come on. and Come try on. to learn how to have a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you already know Jesus, to learn how to become a disciple of mm -hmm. Jesus and have a spiritual life. As but if you already got, got baptized, to go find some spiritual leaders mm. and ask advice from them and change your life. Because I believe if today we don't trust God, we don't kneel down to the Jesus, in the judgment we will. Mm. We, we must be confident to see we are spiritual. We always ask advice from the spiritual people. That's the lesson. Amen. Oh